In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how to use tracking links inside of your Google Ads so you can, number one, get the best information possible, and number two, make sure you don't get banned. More on that right after this. All right, you should be watching this video if you're already running or wanna run Google Ads. You wanna be able to use tracking links, especially if you're using a third-party tracker, and you wanna be able to pull in the Google Click IDs, which is something I'm talking about a lot because it's going to replace pixels in the future. These are the three things you should need if you are watching this video. So at the end of the day, tracking is the key to success. You have to know what works so you can optimize it and then work on scaling it up. This is why we need tracking. This is why I talk about it so much. Why most people fail with tracking inside of the Google Ads platform? Well, the interface is confusing, the documentation sucks, and if you make one mistake, you can get your account banned. So this is a really big problem. This is one of the things I pointed out when I was at Google and they did not change it, so I'm here to change it for you. So how you're gonna succeed. Number one, you have to understand how the UI is set up to be able to navigate it. Number two, you have to comprehend value track parameters. And then number three, once I teach you that, you have to implement your solution. So let's dive in. Google tracking, utilizing tracking links inside of Google Ads. Number one, the UI setup. So there's, uh, this is a general ad setup. I'm gonna go through and show you with a YouTube ad. This is for display. Um, but essentially what's going on, the final URL is the URL that someone's gonna land on after they click your ad. So really all you have to make sure you do is grab the landing page, the actual URL, and put that in the final URL. You're not gonna put any tracking up here. It's just like, hey, if we wanna drive them to adskills.com, we'll put in adskills.com, period, end of story. There's a slash, let's say you're driving them to adskills.com slash bulletproof YouTube ads, make sure you put that in there. That's what's important. If you don't get this part right, Google will disapprove your ad. It will get flagged. So make sure that you do this correctly. If you are trying to rotate links, don't do it. That's not the right place to do this on Google. You wanna make sure you have a single uh, URL. If you're having multiple URLs, drive them, set up different ads. This is essentially the place where you just make sure you're disclosing to Google. Here's the page that the ad clickers are gonna land on. Down below in the ad URL options, that's where you put your tracking links. So if you're using a third party tracker, you put in tracker.com, whatever you're routing people through, then you put in your question mark for your query, and then you use your parameters, whether it be UTMs, S's, custom parameters, whatever you've got, and you put in value track parameters. So that's what these squigglies are for here. This is campaign ID. I'll walk you through the list of things that are available, but I've highlighted right here GCLID because that's the Google Click ID that we wanna be pulling in, so that way when we capture conversions, we can post them back to Google. Another whole tutorial on that, it's a big deal, but this is something to make sure that you absolutely need to know. If you're not using a tracker, so most of you that are running agencies or brands, probably you're not using third-party click trackers, and that's a good thing because to me, third-party click trackers are on their way out. Ad, work, ad networks are kind of working to try and fill this void. They don't like when people cloak or they're using redirects. So it's really, everyone's getting to kind of the parallel tracking side. So if you're not using a click tracker, I think that's a good thing. I wouldn't worry about this. But how you're gonna set up these this tracking template is rather than putting the tracker.com that you're gonna route people through, all you're gonna put in here is copy and paste exactly like this, bracket LP URL. So all that's happening here is AdWords is gonna grab, excuse me, the artist formerly known as AdWords, is gonna grab this landing page and plug it in here with this tracking information after it. That's all this is. So you'll copy and paste bracket LP URL bracket question mark and then the tracking information you want pulled in with the value track parameters. That's how you're gonna go through and set these up. So that's the overall, let's dive into the details now. So value track parameters, these are dynamic macros. So all we're saying is Google has a bunch of information on the back end they're storing within the ad system and they've given you the ability to pull that stuff out that you can pull it into your CRMs. So I'll walk you through the options that are available in a help doc but essentially we're talking about the, the ID of the campaign, the ad group, the ad, the device type, the keyword, the placements, like all of these things, the Google Click ID. These are just important pieces of information that lives inside of Google that they're allowing you to extract and pull into your CRM. You're gonna add it to your links and then inside of your CRM, now you can start to segment and say, what are the factors that are causing us the most profit and the most loss? So that way you can go through and optimize your campaigns. That's the entire purpose of value track parameters. I have a whole tutorial on them, so you can go through and check that out. I'll walk you through the details here in a second. Value track basics. Here's how you keep yourself out of trouble. So tracker or no tracker. If you have a tracker, giddyuptrack.com, question mark. No tracker, LP URL, question mark. That's it. Keep it that simple. Note about trackers, the third-party trackers. Some of them are on Google's naughty list. There's a bunch of affiliates that have kind of ruined that tracker for you. So if you're using volume or thrive, I've seen those two kind of just be instant bans on Google AdWords. 
so I would really make sure that you don't utilize those uh, if you've got another third-party tracker. The thing is I'm not going to make a recommendation because the more people who move over to new trackers, the more likely they are to get banned. So I would tell you right now, preferably learn how to run without a third-party tracker utilizing a CRM. If you are going to use one, don't use Volume or Thrive at this point with Google because they're pretty much instant bans. That's the best information I can give you on that. So parameter options, I'm going to walk you through the list of options to review, placement device, campaign stuff. There's a bunch of information we can walk through it. What you are absolutely going to want, um, Google Click ID, so GCLID, and then Creative is the Ad ID. Those are the two things I have to have no matter what because I need to know what ad drove the result and what was the click ID so I can post it back. Those are the two things that are like not negotiable for me, um, so, but I'll walk you through the list of options. So once again, all you're gonna do here is I'll show you inside of the AdWords interface here in just a second, how do we put in our landing page and then how do we put in that uh, the tracker down below. Um, and so we'll kind of go through that here in just a second. So first thing, let me hop into the value track parameters. So this is a link. Um, if you just search value track parameters, it's called setting up with value track parameters. And if you scroll down here, most of the way through the page, I'll zoom in so you can see this. Oops. So available value track parameters. This is hidden, I have no idea why. This is what you want. So you wanna be able to come in here and pull these parameters in. So it'll explain campaign ID, ad group ID, if you're using a feed, target, all kinds of stuff, locations, match type, network, device, Google Click ID. Um, if mobile, you can do a certain value. If not mobile, so it's device basically versus mobile, you can change what happens there. If search, if display or YouTube, creative keyword placement, all these things. There's a bunch of stuff that's going on there. Ad position is really important with search. Um, so there's a bunch of things that you can go put in here. At the end of the day, what I recommend, what we do with ours is campaign ID, ad group ID, creative, and Google Click ID. Those are the four things that we focus on. Once again, if I only have two options, ad ID or creative, and Google Click ID are the two things I absolutely have to have. So inside of here, inside of AdWords, I'm showing you um, how we set this up for YouTube advertising. So final URL would be adskills.com, something very basic. That's gonna be our display URL. Um, and then you can put in your call to action, whatever. But as you see, the ad URL options are hidden. This is what you have to click on. So what I'm gonna put in here, since I'm not using a third-party tracker, is it would be, let me just zoom in so you can see this. So adskills.com, I wanna pull in adskills.com, so LP URL with the brackets, and then question mark, and let's say I want UTM medium equals CPC, and UTM source equals YouTube, and UTM campaign equals, what a, I don't even know what the video I'm using is, so let's just say this is Google Ads, and UTM content equals, what's the name of this video? You Google Ads, so conversion action set video. So what's gonna happen now is whenever someone clicks on this call to action button, Google's gonna say, all right, we're gonna route them to adskills.com, but we're gonna grab this tracking information here and send it through. This will be captured inside of my Google Analytics in my sources report, so I can see source medium and I can see all the things coming in and I can go deeper and deeper into them to see what's producing results. But that's essentially what we're going through and doing. So once again, I'm gonna back out here. Your final URL is exposed. This is where you disclose your landing page. And then down here in the URL options underneath tracking template, this is where you come in and put in all of the value track parameters. So I forgot to do that. Let me go back here. So what I would do is let's say I'll do and UTM term equals, and this is where I'm going to pull in GCLID. So this will be, I'm using, since this is not a keyword campaign, so we're not doing search, I would use term for this, and I'm gonna pull in the Google Click ID. Now, if you want to, rather than typing this stuff in, so UTM campaign, instead of saying Google Ads, I could just do campaign ID and squiggly brackets. These are the value track parameter, and Google is gonna pull in the ID of the campaign to go through and be able to run ads off that, so that will show up inside of my Google uh, Analytics account, or whichever CRM, you're just grabbing it in a hidden field, or however your CRM works. Just make sure you're using tracking parameters that it understands and that stuff's being pulled in. So that's how you go through and set up tracking links inside of your Google Ads account. If you have any questions, you can ask them down below or hit me up in Pro League. Uh, otherwise, hope you have a great one. Talk soon. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you click on the subscribe button on the screen right now. Also, if you'd like to join the Daily Edge and get the daily dose of what's working in paid traffic and tracking, you can text Daily Edge to 44222.